Hi, it's Mr. Alex from Middlebury High School. This is a brief video on condensed formulas and how we can transfer them to structural formulas. Now we have a couple of structures here. We have A, B, C, okay? And we have this guy right here, the structural formula that we want to write as a condensed formula. Okay, now the first one, all you have to do is establish what's on a particular carbon. So you look at the carbon first, Okay, and whatever is in front of that carbon is attached to that particular carbon, all right? Um, remember that the very first thing we did in organic chemistry, carbon has uh, four valence electrons and wants to make four bonds for our purposes. Now, in organic chemistry, carbon will be doing sharing, all right? So, the bonds will be covalent. So, for the very first carbon here, you write the C down. You have two hydrogens right here, so they will be on that particular carbon. Now remember, hydrogen only forms one bond, so it will never ever be in the middle of the parent somewhere. It will always be hanging off the side of the parent, okay? It can be in between making two bonds or more. Now the bromine is also attached to this first carbon, right? So you can put the bromine here, all right? Top or bottom, doesn't matter, all right? And that first carbon is finished. You look at the second carbon, which is this one right here, all right, second carbon, so you write it down, carbon. Now, attached to it is what's in front of it, it's just two H's, so you put an H at the top, H at the bottom. I'm leaving the H's out for the sake of space, right, but the line, dash lines, the blank lines represent hydrogens. Okay, so that's done. You move on to the third carbon, all right, which is this one right here, okay? So the third carbon, you just write it down first, and you look in front of it. It has an H and a BR on it, so this line represents H, this line represents a BR, okay? And you move on to the fourth carbon, which is this one right here. You write the fourth carbon down, you see in front of it there's H2, so you know one H goes at the top, one H goes in the bottom. The H cannot be inside the parent, so they have to go there, all right? And last but not least is this guy at the end, the CH3, carbon and three hydrogens and you're done that's your structural formula right there okay it's a dibromo um what is it one two three or five a dibromo pentane okay one three dibromo pentane and you're done but it just says it has a structural formula you have to name it and you're done you move on now this guy right here same principle you look at the carbons okay you look at this carbon right here you see what's in front of it you see ch3 all right so you put the carbon down and the three hydrogens are attached to it. You move on, you see the second carbon, which is this one, you write it down, you see what's attached to it, you see Cl2, right? So both of those Cl's are attached to this carbon right here, the second carbon. So one has to be the top, and one has to be the bottom. So Cl goes there, and Cl goes there. Now guys, remember, Cl Chlorine is in group 17, it has 7 valence electrons, it needs one more for a stable octet, it's not going to be in the middle of the parent chain making 2 or 3 bonds or anything, only one bond, so anything one with one bond will hang off the side of carbon, won't be in the parent, so that's why, how I know it's not inside, alright, I'm moving on, next one is this carbon right here, alright, okay, so we write it down, and you see what's in front of it, you have an H and a CL, so you put an H here, and a seal on the bottom. Okay, you could put a seal on the top, it doesn't matter. H and the bottom doesn't matter. But whatever. Okay, so there you go. But H and CL are hanging off the carbons and not in the parents. You go to the next carbon right here, which is this one. You write it down. Okay, um, there's two hydrogens on that carbon. So you write one at the top and one at the bottom. And last but not least, you have CH3 at the end. This carbon has three hydrogens on it. One, two, three and you're done, you move on. Okay, it's a trichloro guy. All right, this one, same principle once again. Okay, you look at the first carbon right here, all right, you write it down, it has three H's on it. You look at this carbon right here, you see two H's, you put those two H's on that carbon. Now this carbon right here, right, you gotta be careful, okay, it has an H, right? Okay, which is that right there, which you're going to put H right there. Now, notice you have CH3 here, right? So, where is that CH3 going to go? Can you stick the CH3 in the middle here someplace? No, you can't. So, what it's telling you, that CH3 belongs on this side right here. So, it's a methyl group hanging on this side. 
How do I know I can't stick it in there? Because carbon, right, has three hydrogens. This carbon has three hydrogens attached to it. It can only make one more bond. If I try to put it inside the parent, I'll be violating the rule and I'll have more than uh, four bonds for the um, for that particular carbon. So it has hanging off the side. Some textbooks put a parenthesis around it to show that it's, it's not inside the parent. But even if they didn't put a parenthesis around it, you know it could not be in the parents okay so this carbon right here is a methyl group so always make sure you know how many bonds your own um, carbons make all right in your hydrogen your elements all right so moving on this carbon here all right this carbon right here has an H and a BR on it so you put that down you put an H there you put a BR there and last is this carbon right here you put it down there and you put three hydrogens since you see three hydrogens right there and you're done okay so always watch out for your if you have a methyl group or not but the number of hydrogens attached to the carbon tells you where it is okay last but not least we have this guy right here right they give you a structural formula showing all the bonds where the things are located and they want you to write it as a condensed formula so we'll do this guy first carbon number one here it has three hydrogens attached to it, so you simply write CH3. You write a carbon first, and whatever is attached to it, you put it in front. Okay, so CH3. This carbon number two, we'll put it right here, C, and what's attached to it? We have an H and a CL attached to it, so you put C, you put an H and a CL right there, CHCL, you're done. That represents the second carbon. Okay, carbon number three has two H's attached to it all right so you just put c h2 this one has two h's attached to it c h2 this one has two h's attached to it c h2 all right this one has an h and a br attached to it so you put c h b r and last but not least this guy right here has three hydrogens you put c h three okay and you're done now some textbooks as a final point these ch2s right what they do sometimes they put a parentheses around them all right like that and like that and they'll put a little three right there to represent these other that you have three ch2s in a row but it's no problem all right so some books do that so instead of writing all the ch2s out they put a parentheses around one of the ch2s and put a number of carbons the number of ch2s that you have in a row Sometimes you can have five or seven or whatever or nine or whatever. And it's a long chain, so instead of writing them all out, they put a shorthand like that. So watch out for that too. But otherwise, um, this is a pretty simple topic. Okay, you're using your common sense. Carbon forms four bonds, halogens and hydrogens form only one, and you go from there. As always, hard work, but sacrifice equals success. Study, 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 and take care.